welcome to Learn and Play with Go Crazy Museum. My name is Miss Angie and I'm so happy you're here today. Let's sing a song. Hello, 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 how are you? Hello, 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 how are you? I'm good, I'm great, I'm wonderful. Hello, 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 how are you? That was great, thank you so much. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Earth Day. This week, we celebrated Earth Week. Earth Week and Earth Day is when we think about protecting our Earth and conserving our planet for the future. Our artwork today that we're going to talk about is called The Wild Turkey by John James Audubon. We're also gonna to talk to my friend from the Tulsa Zoo a little bit later about what you can do to help protect the planet at your own home. Lastly, we're going to be looking at a really fun activity that you can do with recycled materials in your own home. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the painting, The Wild Turkey by John James Audubon. Audubon was an immigrant from Haiti. He loved all of the birds in North America so much that he wanted to paint all of them. Audubon was an ornithologist. An ornithologist studies birds. He loved all of the birds in North America. So he went all over and painted lots of birds and wrote books about them. How fun is that? Now let's look closely at Audubon's The Wild Turkey painting. What do you see in this painting? I see a turkey, some plants, leaves, clouds, and the blue sky. What do you wonder about this painting? I wonder about the turkey. Is it a boy turkey or a girl turkey? What is that turkey looking at? Let's focus on that turkey for a minute. Do you hear that? sounds like a wild turkey. Can you make a turkey noise? What details can you notice about this turkey? Maybe the details can tell us whether this is a girl or a boy turkey. I see a blue head with black hairs, yellow eyes looking towards the sky, a large claw on the back of his leg. This claw is called a spur. A white horn on top of his head, this is actually called a snood. I also see a tuft of hair-like feathers on his chest. This is called a beard. All of these details show us that this turkey is a boy turkey. Boy turkeys are also called toms. Toms are more likely to have long spurs on their legs, a large snood on their fa face, and a beard. Now let's look at this turkey's habitat. A habitat is a place where an animal calls its home, where it lives. I see fluffy clouds, smooth leaves, a broken cane reed, grass, a rock, and some mountains off in the distance. It looks like there's an open space near some hills. This habitat is perfect for this turkey. Turkeys live all over North America, near forests and areas with open pastures and fields. It's important for us to protect their natural habitats so that animals in the wild and the turkeys can thrive there forever. A great way to help protect habitats is through conservation. Conservation is the protection of all things in nature so that they can be around for many more years. To practice conservation, we can be prudent when using our natural resources. Natural resources are things that we use that come from the earth. This includes water, plants and trees, oil and gas, which are used to fuel our cars and make plastic. It's important to limit our use of our natural resources in order to keep the earth safe and healthy for the future. To learn a little bit more about conservation, I talked to my friend Rick Katarski from the Tulsa Zoo. He knows a lot about how to protect animals and our planet. Let's listen. Hi, Rick. Thanks for being Hi. with me today. 
First, I want you to introduce yourself for us and share a little bit about what the zoo is doing to help with conservation efforts. Sure, yeah, my name is Rick Katarski. I'm the Curator of Wildlife Conservation and Scientific Advancement at the Tulsa Zoo. And the zoo uh, for wildlife conservation uh, has been doing tremendous work for many years. So the zoo has been around since 1925, so that's a really long time. Um, the conservation work that we've been doing consecutively uh, for years now is started in 1997, and we've, we've supported over 360 projects to save animals and wildlife. And so the mission of the zoo is connecting, caring, and advocating for wildlife and people in wild places. And so uh, we try our hardest to do, do that. So we uh, protect animals all around the world, um, everywhere from Africa to Asia, South America, South Africa, all over the world. Rhinos, elephants, different types of birds, different types of primates. Um, we even do things here in Oklahoma for alligator snapping turtles and for American bearing beetles and for monarchs, monarch butterflies, which will be coming through Tulsa right now. If you go outside, you might catch, catch one flying by. Thanks. Could you share with us a little bit about why conservation is important? Um, well, just every type of conservation is super important because it's, it's not, uh, wildlife isn't a resource that this is going to uh, last forever. And so it can last forever if we can serve it, just like anything else. If you have a glass of water and you drink it all, well, you don't have any more if you drink it just in a few minutes. But if you take small sips and drink over time, you'll, your water will last longer. And that's the same thing with wildlife and the ecosystem. We have to preserve it, conserve it. And, and utilize it and enjoy it in a responsible manner. So it's really important to do wildlife conservation so that those things that we have that are so beautiful all over the world stay with us and for us to be able to enjoy them. That's so true. Uh, would you be able to share with us some information that our friends and their parents at home can do on their own to help with conservation? First, you could just probably go to our website and look at all the different projects and the different animals that we do work with. Um, if you want to be more proactive, you can uh, maybe plant a butterfly garden or get some uh, native Oklahoma plants and just put them out in pots on your front porch and uh, see all the cool insects that are going to come and visit those plants. Um, you could maybe plant a tree where there's lots of beautiful native trees in Oklahoma that you could plant. And all those types of actions and those types of things help wildlife and help conserve, conserve species. Those types of things are important resources and food and shelter and all types of things for different types of animals, uh, insects and birds and small mammals. So anything like that you can do. Um, there's small conservation efforts you can do as far as sustainability or green practices. So like recycling or turning your thermostats down to like 74 degrees or turn the lights off when you leave the room, close your blinds to keep your house cooler drink from a reusable cup, um, take the plastic pledge. Uh, we challenge everybody at the zoo to remove one plastic item, uh, one use item from their every their daily use. So, you know, try to find something that you use every day that's plastic that you could replace it with something that's not plastic. And um, so, yeah, there's lots of things you could do at home. Awesome, thank you. I will definitely yeah. try some of those things. <laughs> well, that's all the questions I have for you today. So I wanted to thank you for being with me today um, and we'll see you at the zoo. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Bye. Look forward to it. Come see us. Rick had some great ideas for things that we can do at home to help with conservation. I can't wait to try some of them. One of the best things we can do to help with conservation is recycling. Will you sing a recycling song with me? Great. Let's go. We recycle, we recycle, yes we do, yes we do. Caring for our planet, caring for our planet, you should too, you should too. That was great, thanks. Now I'm gonna show you about a really fun activity you can do using your recycled materials at home. Let's take a look. The first step is to collect all of your recycled materials uh, and loose parts in either an egg carton or collection of bowls, whatever you have on hand. I collected some twist ties, some pop tabs, 
some bottle lids, and some old pieces of cardboard. You can also collect things like sticks or leaves or flowers, whatever you think that you would like for your art project. Now let's look at what I created using these collection of loose recycled parts. My first creation is a bird that I made up in my imagination. He has pop tabs for feathers, he has a beak, he has a bottle cap for a head, and a piece of cardboard for his wing. Can you make something like that? My second creation is reflective of our painting that we looked at earlier, the wild turkey. I created my own turkey using my recycled parts. Does it look like a turkey to you? Can you try to make one? Great, I can't wait to see your creations too. Well, that's the end of our show today. Thank you so much for being with me today and learning all about conservation and turkeys and John James Audubon. We'll see you next time. Bye.